Hey guys, this is Accounting Nightmare, and this is Shadowpan Monastery on challenge mode. So we start off by pulling this entire first room. And now this pull really hurts, like a lot of things in challenge modes, but you're definitely going to want to use your stuns. And um, it's, it's a very really nasty pull because there's these ambushes just popping out of nowhere all the time. And they're just going to attack whoever the hell they want. So you're going to have tons of group damage going on. Your tank will do the best he can, but uh, there's going to be a lot of pain going around, so make sure people pop personal cooldowns if they get in trouble, just until the tank can ram them all up. They also do a stun on the tank, and I got stunned this time. This is the first time I've been stunned. It's a bit weird. But yeah, we pull them into the boss room so we can get ready to fight the boss right away. You don't have to do this, it's just a little bit of a time saver. Let me finish them off while we pull the boss. So this boss, uh, he is a bit he's a bit nastier than some challenge mode bosses can be. To heal anyway. This first phase, pretty much just uh, avoid the lightning things on the ground. The static fields, that's what they're called. Yep, those ones. They will pretty much one-shot you. Apart from that, there's not a whole lot to do in this phase, so I'll make sure I pop a focus pot. Just to get some mana back, because phase 2 and 3 are incredibly healing intensive. I mean, there's a little bit of healing going around, but make sure people just finish off the adds, and the tank damage won't be very much at all. As soon as we hit phase 2, the healing is going to ramp up, because he does a the dragon does a breath on the tank, which it, it can hurt quite a bit. It, yeah, it sort of does ticking damage. It's rather painful. Plus you've got Magnetic Shroud going on. You want uh, people to stack up on one side while the tank stands on the other and points the dragon away. It's a good idea for everyone to be uh, stacked up because when you heal the Magnetic Shroud debuff off someone, it'll do a burst of healing to everyone nearby. And that helps to heal everyone else's shroud off. But uh, I find I, I have to heal the tank's shroud off first. Because, you know, it absorbs healing, so I won't be able to top him up while that's on him. And then I worry about us, the group. Uh, I used to pop him of Hope during this phase, but um, our DPS just kept getting better and better at this fight, and I got to the point I didn't need to do that, so... <laughs> so that's nice. Um, when we go into phase 3, I think all the shrouds go away. That's what seemed to happen. Not really sure why. This phase is pretty much just... Uh, you can just all stack on him for easier healing if you want. This is no, um, there's nothing scary to look out for here. It's just the damage ramps up and up the longer he stays alive, so you want to burn him down as quickly as you can at this point. And pop any healing cooldowns you've got, there's a good time for you. Um, divine him, tranquility barrier, whatever. This next hallway can be very scary. These Shah. Uh, if you don't have a lot of stuns, you don't want to pull very many at once. We pull pretty much the whole hallway. It's very dangerous, but um, you know, if it goes well, it definitely pays off. You can actually skip the shard to the back and to the right. I've seen it done in a video before. You can uh, hug the wall and you, sh you won't aggro him. We didn't end up trying it, but um, that's something to try if you really stretch for time. Yeah, so there's Shah. When they get low on health, they start casting a move called Shah Nova. Uh, not Shah Blast, it's a different one. They only do it when they're low on health, and it does ridiculous amounts of damage. We found it would just one-shot us all. So we have to get them all down to low health at the same time, and then we rotate stuns. Use Leg Sweep, uh, Ring of Frost, and I put my Psychic Scream at the end. Yeah, if they get one of those casts off, you are screwed. I don't think interrupt works. I mean, it looks like it should, based on the casting bar, but my UI is probably just having problems there. Because we tried several times to interrupt it, and it did not work. And I hate these arrows. I think you can just pan your camera up to see where they're going, but I tried that and just got a f screen full of arrows, so <laughs> that didn't really help me much. Thankfully, once someone reaches the top, the archers go away, so... Another nice time saver you could do that I saw done in a different video 
you can have someone run up and do that while you're doing the trash beforehand and he can activate this event. As long as he can survive this on his own, everyone else won't have to worry about arrows. But uh, that, that could be dangerous because you have to be able to do the trash, the, the Shah trash, without, uh, without that one person. He's probably going to be a DPS because you're going to need your tank and your healer. But yeah, before we did the arrow run, there were some Shah, uh, some sorry, some Shadow Pan dudes. You can just run past them, don't have to aggro. But this event, um, this this is probably where a lot of your time goes. This is why the this is the longest of all the challenge modes. It's just a long event. There's not really much going on here. Don't be too worried about your mana here as a healer because you're going to get tons of time right after this to drink. And sort of try to keep them sort of close together, but keep in mind you do have to move out of their uh, what they call it, 100 hands ability. Yeah, they do like a conal fist attack. That's the only thing they do that really hurts, because everything else... They, they do a lot of different things, but none of them actually seem to hurt. Like this parry stance, I don't know what that is, it doesn't really do much. There's a breath of fire they do, which doesn't do much. It's just the uh, 100 hands ability. That's the one you have to look out for. Apart from that, I, yeah, I, I hope I DPS here a bit. The damage going around here really isn't very much. Now you just have to uh, survive until you get to the mini bosses. Wish there was a counter or something for this section, because uh, it'd be nice to just know how many you've got left, so you know how much mana you got left to blow. But now, oh well, there it is: hundred hand strike. That's the one you're going to look out for. All right, yeah. Now you should break combat, so you can drink. And you get the two mini bosses. Looks like they counted for the enemies killed. Now we're at 29 out of 32. So if, if you can skip any trash in this place, you probably should because you're going to have no problems hitting the, uh, the 32 enemies required. Alright, so the mini bosses, Flying Snow and Fragrant Lotus. Uh, one of them does a whirlwind. It's a yeah, flying kick. I oh, know it's not that one, but it's uh, it's not really that scary. There it is, whirling steel. Uh, it won't just flat out murder someone like um, the whirlwinds in Mojan Palace. I remember that those were really scary. These ones are pretty forgiving. You can get hit by a couple ticks of it and then run out, and you you're not just gonna drop dead. <laughs> if that's if you're melee, if you're a tank, you can pretty face tank a lot of it. Now, I'm surprised by how forgiving these uh, mini bosses are, but they do hit the tank rather hard. Yes, we, we kill Flying Snow second. You have my price to... And once again, you don't really have to worry about your mana because you're going to have another chance to drink in a second. And we pop a roar so we can run up here nice and quick. But uh, you, you are. Like, you do have to wait for that NPC to go over and spawn as a boss before you can actually pull him, so you are time limited in that sense. Yeah, so you should get plenty of time to drink there. So, Master Snowdrift. Um, I actually, I found him a lot easier here than he was on Heroic. Because on Heroic groups, just, usually I'm doing it in a pug and they just do whatever the hell they want. On challenge mode, though, when you're organised, he's not really that bad. Again, that tornado kick doesn't seem to really hurt that much. So your melee DPS don't have to be watching their timers or anything, just run out when he does it and you, you won't eat that much damage. He does Fist of Fury, which your tank just face him away and then move out the way when he does that. Yeah, phase two, so this is where he gets the illusions. Uh, just have a DPS assigned to each direction. So we have a ranged DPS on the left and one on the right. And our tank and our melee stay up the front. And just attack, attack your dude until he despawns because he's an illusion, or until you figure out he's the right one. The illusions, the palm attacks they do still hurt, so you want to despawn them as quick as you can. And then you will have zero trouble avoiding the uh, palms. We might get hit by one here and there, but it, it, um, it won't do that much damage. And if you've got three of them up all doing their palm attacks, then you can get hit by quite a few of them, and that really adds up. But only getting hit by one of them is just, it's easy to heal. It's no big problem. 
when he goes into his final phase, he will spawn like two illusions as he um, ticks over. So make sure you despawn those first or you're going to be hit by these palm attacks. And he does this chase down move, which I don't know if it's possible to ever actually avoid it. I've never done it in Heroic. But thankfully it doesn't actually do much damage, so you don't even bother, just tank it. <laughs> it's easy to heal through. Just make sure people are topped up so they don't die to it. But yeah, apart from that, it's really not very scary at all. Alright, so time for invis bots. We use the 15 second uh, pots, but we have a we have a raw in our group. So you might want to try 18 seconds if you don't have any speed boosts. It's up to your group, really. Or you could just end your run right there and grab that uh, group of trash right before the bridge. It's up to your group. It's a nice time saver if you can get past them, though. Also, you can get pulled out of invis there because there's these fire arrows that are raining down. Uh, you can see the patch of fire while you're invisible, but I mean it is possible for them to spawn under you. Don't run over them, but if they spawn under you, you're kind of screwed. There's a bit of RNG there, unfortunately. So these volatile energies, when they die, they do a big burst of AoE damage. Hurts quite bad, so make sure people stay away when they're about to explode. And now we take this final trash uh, into the boss room. Well, it's really the room right before the boss, but uh, yeah, we, we line aside pool. And suddenly they all aggro me. <laughs> I have no idea why, but uh, that was a very close call that rattled me. And that leads me to make another mistake. I'm standing way too close here, as you'll discover in a second. And kaboom. <laughs> but thank uh, thankfully I have Spirit of Redemption, being a Holy Priest. So I give the tank uh, GS while I get a battle res. Very nice. These destroying Shah, um, they don't really seem to do a whole lot. They do that, uh, I think they do a cone breath, but the volatile ones are definitely the ones you want to look out for. Okay, so the third boss, Shower of Violence. Make sure you're completely topped up going into this guy. This guy is really nasty. Every time we killed him, I felt like it was a fluke because there was just so much crap going on. Uh, this guy has a debuff he puts on people, which... It's a ticking dot, but it also increases their damage done, so don't dispel it, basically. And as it gets, as it stacks higher, your DPS will start doing more and more to the boss. Just make sure that you don't dispel it. But as a result, there's a ton of healing to do here. That's on top of what, what's already going on. You've got the, the spinning attack. He puts a disorienting smash on the tank, which you do need to dispel. And you might want to add that to your, um, your healing debuffs. Or just dispel the tank when you see the boss mod for it. I'm not sure if our tank had some kind of immunity for it or something he kept popping because I very rarely had to dispel it. Sometimes I'd see the alert for it, I'd go to dispel it and it was already gone. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, make sure that does get dispelled though. Uh, or he will turn around and destroy a DPS. Or even you, probably the DPS though. The Shah spikes in this fight really hurt. They won't one-shot you, but they, they do do a lot of damage, uh, and they have very little warning. You can't really react to them. What you have to do is, when you see the Shah Spike timer coming up, then you just have to start sidestepping. So that if he does pick you, you won't get spiked. That's the advice I give, but I very rarely actually did it. I was too busy freaking out about everyone's low health, and oh god, I'm out of mana, oh god, the tank's low, oh god, I have to dispel him. Yeah, this is complete chaos, I found. I'd, I'd say this is one of the hardest uh, challenge mode bosses to heal. I find this guy can be hard just on like heroic. The lone challenge mode. I haven't done heroics in a while though, so maybe people have outgeared him now. Yeah, that, that dot will stick around after the boss, so try and dispel it off people. I could have drunk here, actually, I was out of combat. Alright, so this trash, right before the fourth and final boss, 
There's huge time skips you can do here, and you definitely should. So this is a trash where they won't die unless you click the nearby defender's body. And as you can see, you have to you have to click four in total just to complete the challenge mode. So that's their attempt at making sure you do all of this trash. But if you have several people click one at the same time, you'll get credit for several. You see you've got two out of four and we've only clicked one. You can actually have your entire party click one and get credit for all four right then and there. Just have like a countdown over vent or whatever. Just organize it over voice chat. Yeah, so with that trick you can skip plenty of trash. You can skip that group on the right we just ran past. You can skip that group on the left. You can skip a later group. And this slope, once again, I used my scorpion originally and I couldn't get up the slope. I had to, uh, to switch to my horse. I don't know why the mount does that. It's qu it's quite annoying. <laughs> but yeah, just, just keep in mind, if you're having trouble with slopes, try a different mount. Yeah, so this is going to be the o this is the only other trash group we kill here. Because again, we're going to have our two ranged DPS click the uh, corpse at the same time. And we hop up to four out of four. And there you go. If you do have everyone click the same one at the same time, um, I don't know if you can skip this group or the other group we killed. If you can, you probably should just do one group and have everyone click. I'm not sure if your tank can because he's taking damage. That might interrupt it. But uh, you could just have your healer as one of the clickers. Make sure your tank pops a cooldown when he clicks. Or you can pop an AoE stun right as everyone clicks. Those are just a few different ways you could do it. And this final group here, you can skip it just by running here very carefully. And now it's time for the final boss. Once I get full of mana, of course. <laughs> for this whole boss fight, I was pretty much just afraid of pulling that extra group. So I keep standing around here to the side. But uh, that results in some pretty annoying camera angles, as you'll see. Okay, so you've got that ring of malice, which is that ring attack. Uh, the trash beforehand does this, and it hurts a hell of a lot. Uh, get, stay out of it. We barely got hit by it on the boss, though, so uh, I don't know how much it hurts. Just avoid it. But uh, if you're standing inside it, you don't take damage. It's only if you're getting hit by the actual ring. So your melee DPS can stand in it, in your tank. Then you've got the gripping hatreds, which uh, spawn. They always spawn in threes. You got a little, got a little bit of time to burn them down, and then they pull everyone around, like you saw. How many DPS you want to assign to those? It just depends on your group composition. We had our two ranged DPS doing it. I think we just had our melee DPS stay on the boss the whole time. And I helped out a little bit with the hatreds. This is actually our first time at this boss, so we're still trying to feel the fight out, trying to figure out who should do what. Uh, the boss does a, a spell called Rising Hate. We had an interpretation for it. I don't think he actually got a cast off, but according to Wowhead, it does damage to several targets and increases their hatred, so probably just want to inter interrupt that. <laughs> Certainly helps. And finally, you've got the hatred mechanic. Just make sure you meditate before you get to full hatred. If you get full hatred, you your healing... Your incoming healing is reduced and you uh, you get a really bad hit rate on the boss. So it's pretty bad all round. There you go. That was our first time getting this far and we didn't find the boss very hard at all. Uh, Shadow Pan, it was... It's the longest challenge mode, but uh, I, I didn't find it that bad. We actually knocked it out really quick. It's... It does have a couple tricky bosses. The first one is a little rough to heal. Uh, the third one is a complete prick. But there's some gigantic time skips you can do, like the trash skips towards the end. And that makes the timer really lenient for this place. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, we've got all nine golds now. We've completed all the challenge modes that are currently in the game. So for getting all bronze, we all get a title, The Undaunted. For getting all silver, we all get a mount, 
we get a phoenix mount. There's four different colours you can pick from. But you can only choose one of them, unfortunately, and they're not account-wide. So you can't do it on four different characters and complete your set. Yeah, that's, that's a real shame. Yeah, most of us pick the crimson one, as you can see. And finally, for getting all gold, you get a class-specific transmog set. It doesn't have any stats, it's, it's exclusively for transmog. And some of them look pretty darn cool. Here we are, having fun. So from left to right, we are Leeson, our monk, Horoscope, our mage, Melchan, our priest, that's me, Rakenoth, our hunter, and Chris Hansen, our druid. That's all the challenge modes done. They were really, really fun. I hope they do more in the future. It's just a few little niggles that I hope they sort out, like um, a bit more bug testing, like Scarlet Halls was a mess. <laughs> Uh, they should make it so your invis pots reset when you reset the instance. But yeah, apart from that, uh, challenge modes were super fun. And I'm really glad that we did them. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.